This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, I'm Dr. Devya on behalf of T9 team. So today we are going to start our new morning. chapter. Yeah. Now we are going to start our sixth chapter, new chapter. Molecular basis of inheritance. Okay. So in the previous chapter, you have learned about the inheritance pattern and genetic basis of those patterns and Mendel's work, the experimental experiment you have learned, and the genetic material, about the genetic material you have learned. So in this chapter, and in 11th standard, uh, you might have learned about that nucleic acid and all, uh, nucleotides, all those things you might have learned. So in this chapter, we are going to learn about DNA, then genetic material, that about that specific genetic material, then RNA, replication, transcription, genetic code, then translation, then regulation of gene expression, then human genome project, and DNA fingerprinting. So this is the main points of this chapter. So we are going to start this molecular basis of inheritance today. So you know that deoxyribonucleic acid, that is DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, and RNA, ribonucleic acid. These are two types of nucleic acid in which is present in living system. So deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid, DNA and RNA, these are the nucleic acids found in living system. And in most of the organism, in majority of the organism, DNA is acting as a genetic material. So in majority, majority of organism, DNA is the genetic material. So in some viruses and some other organism like that, in that only RNA is working as a genetic material. You know now, RNA, the genetic material in, nowadays, the genetic material, RNA is creating so much of tissues, right? COVID, so such things and all, in that genetic material is virus, viral genetic material is present. So RNA, RNA is having some extra roles, like it is working as adapter, then in some cases it is working as a catalytic molecule or catalyst, it is working as a catalyst also. So deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid, that means DNA and RNA, these are the two types of nucleic acid present in living organisms. And DNA is acting as genetic material. In most of the organisms, DNA is the genetic material. But in RNA, some special type of viruses and some other organisms, this RNA is working as the genetic material. Okay. And then RNA is acting as a catalyst sometimes and it is working as an adapter. So these are the special roles of RNA. Then, so now we are going to discuss about in this chapter what and all included about DNA structure, then DNA replication, then the process of making RNA from DNA. Making RNA from DNA. DNA from R, DNA, RNA is forming or RNA is coming. This is called as transcription. Formation of RNA from DNA, that is called as transcription. And genetic code, genetic code that determines the sequence of amino acids in protein. In protein, 
amino acid sequences are present and the genetic code that is determining the amino acid sequences. So we are going to learn about that in this chapter about genetic code. Then the process of protein synthesis. From DNA, RNA is forming. That is called as transcription. Then from RNA, protein. From RNA, protein synthesis. That is called as translation. Don't get confused about these two terms. From DNA, RNA is formed. That is called as transcription. Then RNA to protein. That is called as translation. Okay. Then essential of human genome sequencing. Essentials of human genome sequencing we are going to learn in this. Then consequences of that. Human genome sequencing consequences. That also we are going to learn in this chapter. Okay. So we are going to learn about DNA and DNA replication. Then RNA development of RNA that is called as transcription. Then genetic code. About genetic code we are going to learn the process of protein synthesis that is called as translation. Then human genome project and or human genome sequencing. Then human genome sequencing consequences. All these things we are going to cover in this chapter. Then first let's see the structure of DNA. So you know that DNA is a long polymer, polymer of deoxyribonucleotides. Okay, I've given exact points. You have to note down all these points because it's very easy. Like this you are learning means you can for uh, board exam and for NEET exam it will be very easy. You won't get any confusion. So DNA, about DNA, what and all points you need to write. DNA is the long polymer of deoxyribonucleotides. It's a polymer of deoxyribonucleotides. Okay. So the length of DNA, it is defined as number of nucleotides. So how we are going to define the length of DNA uh, or how we can define num uh, length of DNA by defining the number of nucleotides. Usually how we will define by the number of nucleotides or the pair of nucleotides. Based on that, we are saying the length of DNA. Okay. How many pairs of nucleotides are present or the number of nucleotides, how many are present. Based on that, we are saying the length of DNA. And this, this is the, for each organism, the DNA is having a particular length. Okay. That is the character, we can say the characteristic of that particular organism. So, for example, in bacteriophage, note down all these points. This is important for neat exam. Bacteriophage 5x174. 5x174 that is having 5386 nucleotides. 5x174 it is having 5386 nucleotides. So that's how we are mentioning the length of DNA. We are mentioning the number of nucleotides present in that. 5x174. What is that? Length of the DNA, 5x174, it is having 5,386 nucleotides. And then bacteriophage, lambda bacteriophage, that is having 48,502 base pairs. Okay, 48,502 base pairs. Okay, so like this, we are going to tell the length of DNA. So DNA, it is a long polymer of deoxyribonucleotides. Then the length of DNA, how we can say the length of DNA based on the number of nucleotides or pair of nucleotides that is called as or it is called as base pairs. Then in a nucleotide you can see three components in a nucleotide. How many components are present? Three components are present. You can see a nitrogenous base, then a pentose sugar and a phosphate group. So in a nucleotide, you can see three components. Which are the three components? Nitrogenous base, pentose sugar and a phosphate group. Pentose sugar, there are two types of pentose sugar. In case of RNA, it is ribose and in DNA, it is deoxyribose. Okay. 
In the case of RNA, that pentose sugar is ribose. RNA, ribose. Don't get confused. RNA, the pentose sugar is ribose. And in DNA, it is deoxyribose. Okay. So, in a nucleotide, nucleotide has three components. Nitrogenous base, then pentose sugar and phosphate group. In DNA, the pentose sugar is deoxyribose and in RNA, the pentose sugar is ribose. And there are two types of nitrogenous bases. First, we said nitrogenous bases, pentose sugar and a phosphate group. In phosphate group, you don't have any confusion. Then ribose sugar, uh, in pen pentose sugar, in the case of RNA, it is ribose and DNA, it is deoxyribose. Then what about the first one, the nitrogenous base? There are two types of nitrogenous bases, purines and pyrimidines. Purines and pyrimidines. There are two types of nitrogenous bases, purines and pyrimidines. Purines, which are now coming under purine, adenine and guanine. Adenine and adenine and guanine. These are the two purines. And what about pyrimidines? Cytosine, uracil and thiamine. Cytosine, uracil and thiamine. These are coming under pyrimidines. So nitrogenous bases, there are two types of nitrogenous bases. First one is purine and second one is pyrimidine. Under purine, which are all will come? Adenine and guanine. Adenine and guanine. These are the nitrogenous bases which are coming under purine. Then pyrimidine. Under pyrimidine, which and all will come? Cytosine, uracil and thiamine. These are the three which are coming under pyrimidine. Then cytosine. Cytosine is common for DNA and RNA. Okay. For DNA and RNA, you can see cytosine. And in DNA, thiamine is present. Okay. Thiamine is present in DNA. And in RNA, you can't see thiamine. Instead of that, you can see uracil. Uracil you can't see in DNA. Uracil you can see in RNA. So instead of thiamine, in RNA, you can see uracil, okay, instead of thiamine. Or at the in the place of thiamine, you, in RNA, you there won't be any thiamine in RNA. Instead of that, you can see uracil, okay. So, nucleotide is having three components. Which are all the three components? A nitrogenous base, a pentose sugar, and a phosphate group. Nitrogenous base, pentose sugar, and a phosphate group. So there are two types of nitrogenous bases. First one is purine and second one is pyrimidine. Under purine, which and all will come? Adenine and guanine. Adenine and guanine. That and all, these two are coming under purines. Then pyrimidine. What about pyrimidines? Cytosine, uracil and thiamine. These are coming under pyrimidines. So cytosine you can see both in RNA and DNA you can see cytosine. But thiamine, in DNA only you can see thiamine. And RNA, only in RNA you can see uracil. In RNA you can't see thiamine. Instead of that you can see uracil. Okay. Thiamine is present in DNA and uracil is present in RNA at the place of thiamine. Then. Next, these points are very important. Note that a nitrogenous base it is linked to the OH. OH of first carbon present, first carbon pentose sugar through N glycosidic linkage to form a nucleoside. To form which one? A nucleoside. So, such as adenosine or Deoxyadenosine, guanosine or deoxyguanosine, cytidine or deoxycytidine and urine or deoxyuridine or deoxythymidine. So these are the a nitrogenous base. It is linked to the OH, OH of first carbon pentose sugar. So which linkage? Through N glycosidic linkage. So this linkage is not done. This linkage, a nitrogenous base linked to which to which one? OH or the hydroxyl group of first carbon pentose sugar through 
N glycosidic linkage. Okay, N glycosidic linkage to form nucleoside. Which nucleoside? Adenosine, then or deoxyadenosine, then guanosine or deoxyguanosine, cytidine or deoxycytidine and uridine or deoxythymidine. Okay, this both in the case of DNA and RNA. Yeah, thymidine. Thymidine in which one it will come? Thymidine? It will come at DNA. But at the same time, when it is coming to RNA, it will come as from with the help of uracil only it will come, right? So uridine. So when a phosphate group is linked to OH of phi dash carbon of a nucleoside through phosphoester linkage, a corresponding nucleotide is formed. Okay. Or deoxynucleotide is formed. It's depending upon the type of sugar present in it. Okay. Deoxy or oxy. So it depends upon the type of sugar present in it. So phosphate group, when a phosphate group is linked to OH of phi dash carbon of a nucleoside, through which linkage? Phosphodiester, phosphoester linkage, phosphoester linkage and a corresponding nucleotide will form. That time what will form? A corresponding nucleotide will form or deoxynucleotide. It, it depends upon the type of sugar present. Okay. So the two nucleotides are linked through 3 dash, 5 dash phosphodiester linkage to form a dinucleotide. Okay. Two nucleotides are linked through 3 dash, 5 dash, 4 4 diester linkage to form what? To form a dinucleotide. This, all these points you have to note down and keep. And more nucleotide can be joined in such a manner to form polynucleotide chain. So like this, here two nucleotides are forming and it is uh, becoming a dinucleotide. Right? Like that, multiple nucleotides are joining in the same way and it is forming a polynucleotide chain. So that's how it is called as a polynucleotide. Multiple nucleotides are joining in the same way and it is forming a polynucleotide chain. Then So a polymer, poly, a polynucleotide chain or a polymer like this, when it is formed, where it is formed at the pre-phosphate moiety at phi dash end of sugar and that is referred as phi dash end of polynucleotide chain. So that end, that is called as phi dash end is called as or uh, that is referred as the phi dash end of polynucleotide chain. Okay. That is the phi dash end of that particular polynucleotide chain. Here you can see the phi dash end. And in the same way you can see at another end. This, this end you can see here. This is the phi dash end of that polynucleotide chain. And here you can see the same 3 dash end. In the same way, you can see here at the end of this polymer sugar OH or hydroxyl of 3 dash group. Here you can see that hydroxyl group of that 3 dash group which is called as 3 dash end of the polynucleotide chain. This is the 5 dash phosphate end. This is the 5 dash phosphate end. Here 3 dash hydroxyl. Hydroxyl end. Hydro 3 dash end of the polynucleotide Chain. So the phi dash end phosphate and three dash end is hydroxyl. Okay, and the polynucleotide chain. This polynucleotide chain it is mainly formed with the help of sugar and phosphate. With the help of sugar and phosphate, you can see the sugar molecule here and the phosphate. By sugar and phosphate combination, the backbone of this polynucleotide is formed. Okay. The backbone of this polynucleotide chain, it is formed with the help of sugar and phosphate molecule. And 
nitrogenous bases are also present. Nitrogenous bases you can see here A, T, G, C you can see here that is connected to the sugar. Here A, T, G, C it is connected to the sugar you can see here in this. Okay. So this is the structure of polynucleotide chain which I am explaining here 5 dash phosphate and 3 dash hydroxyl and backbone is with poly backbone of this polynucleotide chain is formed with sugar and phosphate. This is the sugar and this is the phosphate and nitrogenous bases are connected to the sugar. Here you can see with the sugar nitrogenous bases are also connected. The next in RNA an additional OH group it is present at the two dashed position in the ribose. Okay. In RNA what you can see this is only in the case of RNA every nucleotide residue has an additional OH group present that two dash position of the ribose. So in the two dash position of the ribose OH group is present in the case of an additional OH group is present in the case of RNA only in the case of RNA. And in RNA another point which I have already told uracil will be present instead of thiamine uracil will be present in RNA only in RNA. So it is also called as 5 methyl uracil. It is another chemical name for this Okay, 5 methyl uracil. So in RNA, every nucleotide residue it is having another OH group only in RNA. Another additional OH group which is present at the second position in the ribose. That is present at the second position in the ribose. And in RNA, you can see uracil instead of thiamine. At the place of thiamine, you can see uracil only in the case of RNA. Okay, so 5 methyl uracil that is another name 5 methyl uracil. Now done this additional OH group is present at 2 dash position in the ribose and R in RNA you can see uracil instead of thiamine you can see uracil. So 5 methyl uracil. Okay. Then DNA. DNA is an acidic substance which is present in the nucleus. So in the nucleus DNA is present and that is the acidic substance. It's not the base. It is not having the basic character. It is having the acidic character. Okay. The nature is acidic. The DNA. The nature of DNA is acidic. So DNA is an acidic substance present in nucleus. This is a neat question. DNA is the acidic substance. Okay. And First, this is identified by Fredrik Nisher in 1869. Nisher identified this in 1869 and he named as nuclein. So first he named as nuclein. So DNA is the acidic substance and Nisher identified in 1869 and he named as nuclein. Okay. And in 1953 after so many years. First identified by Nisher in 9, 1869. It is in 1869. And next in 1953 James Watson and Francis Crick. They conducted some studies and they proposed the famous double helix model as the structure of DNA. They proposed the double helix model of the DNA structure. Okay. In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick, based on the X ray diffraction data or X ray diffraction studies of Morris and Franklin, based on all those studies, James Watson and Francis Crick, they proposed double helix model of DNA. Okay. And in that they mention about the pairing between 
two strands, double helical model, double helical model of DNA. In that, they mention mainly about the pairing between these two strands or about these two polynucleotide chains, about the pairing between these two polynucleotide chains. Okay, mainly what they mentioned, Francis James Watson and Francis Crick, what they mentioned, they mentioned about the pairing between the two strands of these polynucleotide chains. Okay, and it was based on Chagav, Chagav's rule. There is a rule, Chagav's rule based on the the Chagav's rule is based on the ratio between that adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine. That is a Chagav rule, a particular rule is there called Chagav rule. So based on all these studies, based on uh, that X-ray diffraction studies and based on this Chagav studies, they propose this double helical model or double helix model. And in this, in this study, mainly they were mentioning about the two strands of that polynucleotide chain and the pairing. How these two strands are getting paired. Based on that pairing of these two strands of polynucleotide chains, they propose this double helical model or double helix model of DNA proposed by Watson and Crick. That is called as Watson and Crick model of DNA, double helix model. Okay. And here, the base pairing, base pairing between those, the base pairing makes a unique property. That is the unique property of the polynucleotide chains. Okay, that base pairing is in a particular pattern that makes or that creates a unique property to the polynucleotide chains. And these polynucleotide chains, they are complementary to each other. Okay, these polynucleotide chains, this is the first strand and this is the second strand of DNA. This is mentioned with the chemical formula, but the polynucleotide chains, these are complementary to each other. And the sequence, if we can, or if you have any idea about the sequence of one strand, we can predict or we can write the sequence of next strand. So the polynucleotide chain, they are complementary to each other. Two strands will be there in a double-stranded DNA. Both strands are complementary to each other. So if you are getting the sequence of one strand, we can easily or nicely we can write the sequence of other strand because that is complementary to the strand. Okay, so we can predict the sequence of the opposite strand. So if you have a strand, see suppose this is a DNA structure and one strand that in this two strands are present in that each strand we can call as a parental strand or the parent in this, this is the parental DNA in each strand we can call as a strand and this is this in the each strand will act as a template template for the synthesis of another new strand okay this can synthesis new strand the dna strand can synthesis new strand how it will synthesis the each strand of this of a particular dna each strand of a particular dna it will act as a template strand for the synthesis of a new strand and this double stranded dna the newly formed double stranded DNA we can call as daughter DNA and in that they will produce a daughter DNA that will be almost similar or identical to the parental DNA molecule. Okay, so whichever strand we have that we can call as parental DNA, the double helix. And in that double helix, each strand can act as a template for the synthesis of a new strand. And the two doubles in that two double stranded DNA, two double stranded DNA, which is newly formed, 
see from the parental strand each parental dna each strand is acting as a template strand and it will produce a new strand so from a parental dna two strands will get separate and each strand will create new strand or it will synthesize the new strand so that two new daughter dnas will be formed okay one parental dna can give rise to two new daughter dna this will be identical then this two change here you can see this is one strand and this is another strand so these two chains both the strands they are coiled in a right handed fashion okay in a right handed fashion these uh, chains these two chains or strands are coiled in a right handed fashion and the pitch of this helix is not down this point this is a mcq question the pitch of this is 3.4 nanometer okay and in each turn around 10 base pairs are present okay around in each turn 10 base pairs and the helix the pitch of that helix is 3.4 nanometer 3.4 nanometer of pitch and roughly in each turn almost 10 base pairs will be present and the distance between a base pair and a helix in a helix the distance between a base pair it is almost around 0.34 nanometer okay 0.34 nanometer in a helix around 10 base pairs are present and the pitch is around 3.4 nanometer and the distance between base pair it is around 0.34 nanometer okay the two head two strands will be there and these are coiled in right handed fashion and the pitch of the helix is around 3.4 nanometer and roughly around 10 base pairs in each turn 10 base pairs are present and distance between each base pair is around 0.34 nanometer okay the plane of one base pair starts over other double helix and the addition of hydrogen bonds that confers that forms the stability of the helical structure okay and the base in two strands of dna are paired through hydrogen bonds or h bonds here these base the bases bases in two strands here these two strands in between base pairs are present these bases are paired with the help of hydrogen bond with the help of hydrogen bond the bases are paired and they are forming the base pair they are forming the base pair with the help of hydrogen bond and adenine forms two hydrogen bond adenine forms two hydrogen bond with thymine thymine also thymine forms hydrogen bond with the adenine also then so the base pairing how it will be adenine will pair with thymine guanine with cytosine so the adenine forms two hydrogen bonds to pair with thymine and exactly opposite also thymine is forming two hydrogen bond to pair with adenine okay so because they are keeping in the same way the pairing is almost in the same way so it is made in these two chains of dna or the two chains of this dna there it is maintaining almost same distance a constant distance between these two strands so the distance between these two strands it is almost constant or they are maintaining it as a constant distance okay then next let's see what is central dogma of molecular biology what is central dogma of molecular biology or what do you mean by dogma actually dogma what is the meaning of that word 
that is a belief or a set of belief that is accepted by the members of a group without being questioned or doubted so without any doubt or without any question that is a belief accepted belief uh, or the people are ready to accept it as such without any question so for such things we will call as dogma okay there is no question there is nothing to question or there is no doubt about that that is the accepted or that belief it is such an accepted thing okay there is nothing to question so such things we will call as dogma so in molecular biology the central dogma that is the process by which the instructions in dna are converted into a functional product so without any doubt without any question from the dna the instructions of that particular dna is converted into a particular product right from the instructions of the dna particular proteins are getting formed so in molecular biology what is central dogma the process by which the instructions in the dna are converted into a functional product that is called the central dogma of molecular biology so in molecular biology what is the central dogma the instructions of dna that are converted into a functional product that is the central dogma of molecular biology so in molecular biology central dogma means flow of genetic information from dna to rna and then to protein so how how that information is flowing from dna to rna and then to protein okay first dna from dna that information will form rna and rn from rna that information will pass and it will form a protein okay so this is the process in which the information in dna is converted into a functional product okay the dna in dna all informations will be present that information that dna directly it can produce the protein so instead of that the dna will form rna and then rna will form the protein so that is the central dogma of molecular biology so in molecular biology central dogma means the flow of genetic information from dna to rna and to so like that genetic information is flowing or uh, that's how it is working in the body of a organism so how it will work from dna it will form rna then rna will form protein and that protein is working on the body of organism okay so that is the functional product dna can directly work or make changes in the body of organism so dna will form rna and this rna will form protein and that protein is working on the body of an organism okay so that is the functional product then in central dogma we have dna rna and protein this is the central dogma dna to rna then to protein okay so dna means that contains the information needed to make all the proteins this dna is having all the materials or the informations all the information which is needed for the protein or with these information we can make the proteins so dna is having all the information which is needed to make the protein then rna how rna is working rna is working as a messenger rna it is acting as a messenger that carries the information from dna to ribosome so from dna to ribosome how that informations are passing with the help of rna so rna is a messenger that carries the informations to the ribosome okay so from dna rna will form first it will take up the information and it will form rna and this rna will go to or rna with the help of ribosome this rna will convert this informations in the form of a protein then next comes the protein now dna over and rna then <coughs> functional protein what is protein how protein forms 
or RNA. This RNA makes a functional product, and that functional particular functional product is called as protein. So RNA makes the protein, and that is the functional thing which is working on the body of organism. Okay. So DNA, RNA, protein. DNA is having all informations to make the proteins, and the RNA carries these informations to the ribosome and forms the protein. Next, that forms the protein. And how protein works? This RNA makes the protein, which is a functional thing, and that protein is working on the body. Okay, that is a functional product. Protein is a functional product. So what is central dogma? Central dogma means flow of genetic informations in the cell. So in the cell you can see DNA from DNA, RNA is forming, then RNA to protein. That is the central dogma. Okay. So first the DNA replication. Here you can see DNA replication. Then that will code for the RNA through transcription process. DNA is coding for RNA. That is called as transcription. Just keep this picture in mind so you won't get confused. First DNA replication, DNA will get replicated. Then that forms the or that codes the RNA. DNA codes the RNA that is called as transcription. Then RNA is coding for protein that is called as translation. Okay. From DNA to RNA that is transcription. Then RNA to protein that is translation. Okay. This is called as Central dogma. So first let's see about DNA. So DNA, what is DNA? Deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA, the double helical model I'm going to explain now. DNA is composed of Two polynucleotide chains. You can see two polynucleotide chains here in DNA. It is composed of two polynucleotide chains and it is having sugar phosphate that forms the backbone. You can see here sugar phosphate SP, SP sugar phosphate that is the backbone. Okay. DNA is composed of two polynucleotide chains and sugar phosphate is forming the backbone. Sugar phosphate is forming the backbone and nitrogenous bases from the interior. Here, inside these two strands, these strands are formed of sugar phosphate. That is working as the backbone and this, inside this you can see nitrogenous bases and these nitrogenous bases you can see here A, T, G, C, all these you can see. So, here in this you can see this is adenine and here it is thymine and here is cytosine and here guanine you can see. So, these nitrogenous bases they are paired or they are held together through hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are helping to pair. Okay. So, the nitrogenous bases that form the interior and the nitrogenous bases are paired with the help of hydrogen bond or by Hydrogen bond, this binding or pairing is happening. And in DNA structure, complementary base pairing, that is very, very important. Complementary base. Which are the complementary bases? Adenine will pair with thymine. A, T, adenine and thymine. Then guanine with cytosine. G, C. In DNA, adenine with adenine with thymine adenine and thymine will get paired a and t then guanine with cytosine g and t okay adenine will pair with thymine with two hydrogen bonds and at the same time guanine will pair with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds okay so the complementary base pair this complementary base pair adenine will never pair with guanine Okay, and thymine will never pair with cytosine. So this complementary, there are complementary base pairing. That is the important feature of DNA. Adenine will pair only with thymine and guanine will pair only with cytosine. So that is the complementary base pairing. That is a very, very important feature of DNA structure. And these two polynucleotide chains, these two chains, they are running anti-parallel. Okay, they are having anti-parallel polarity. They are running anti-parallel to each other. 
See, this is from 5 dash to 3 dash means the opposite will be, opposite strand will be from 3 dash to 5 dash. One 5 dash to 3 dash and another one is 3 dash to 5 dash direction. So, these two chains, they are running anti-parallel, they are having anti-parallel polarity and these two chains, they are in a right-handed fashion, they are getting coiled, okay. They are coiled in a right-handed fashion and they are forming right-handed helix. That the, I have already told that point. It is forming right-handed helix and these chains are coiled in a right-handed fashion. And that's how it is forming a right-handed helix. And between these two strands, here you can see one strand from 5 dash to 3 dash and another strand from 3 dash to 5 dash direction. They are anti-parallel to each other. So there is a maintenance of uniform distance between these two strands. The base pairing that helps in the maintenance of this uniform distance between these two strands. Okay. So how it is maintaining a uniform distance? With the help of this base pairing, it is maintaining a uniform distance between two strands of this helix. Okay. So DNA is composed of two polynucleotide chains and the sugar phosphate that forms the backbone and nitrogenous base forms the interior and that nitrogenous bases are paired through hydrogen bonds and this complementary base pairing A will pair with G and G with C. G will add in with thymine and burn in with cytosine. This pairing that is the important feature of DNA structure and these two polynucleotide chains or two strands they are anti-parallel to each other or they are following anti-parallel polarity and the chains, these chains are coiled in a right-handed fashion and it is forming a right-handed helix. And because of this base pairing, uniform distance is maintained between both the strands of the helix. So both the strands of DNA helix, a particular distance, uniform distance is maintained throughout the strand. Here in the structure you can see guanin and cytosine. Guanin is paired with cytosine G, C and here again C, G you can see and here you can see adenine and thymine. Adenine and thymine. Adenine is paired with thymine. Here thymine with adenine. The DNA backbone, this, this is the sugar phosphate that forms the backbone. Here you can see and Hydrogen bonds. In between these base pairs, you can see hydrogen bonds. Okay. So, which are all the nucleotide bases present in DNA? Guanine, cytosine, adenine and thymine. Okay. Next, semi-conservative DNA replication model. Watson and Crick, they suggested semi-conservative DNA replication model. So, according to Watson and Crick, DNA, that is the semi-conservative replication model. In this, the, if this is the parental strand, both the str parental strands will get separated to synthesis a new strand, daughter strand. And each strand is acting as a template for synthesis of a new strand. Here, these two strands will get separated and in among the parental strands, both strands will get separated and each strand of that parental strand that will act as a template for the synthesis of a new strand. And that newly synthesized strand, it is based on the base pairing of this parental template. On parental strand, which and all base pairs are present, based on that, the base pairs will appear in the newly synthesized strand. Okay, it will be complementary to the parental strand basis. Right, then only it will form the hydrogen bond. Like in parental strand, if you can see A in the newly formed strand, which one will be there? It will pair with thymine only. Adenine will pair with thymine only. So here, thymine will appear. So like that, each strand acts as a template for synthesis of a new strand. And the new strand which is synthesized, it will be based on the complementary base pairing. Complementary base pairing with the template strand. 
and each newly formed molecule each newly formed dna molecule will be having one parent among the both strands one will be the parent strand and another strand will be the newly formed one and that's how it is forming a new dna so semi conservative half of that dna newly formed one is conservative that semi conservative from the term itself it's clear semi conservative half of that is conserved and another half is created newly right half is same as such it is and another half 50% is conserved as such and another 50% only one strand is newly formed another one is the old strand from the parent one right so each new molecule has one parent strand and one newly formed strand and that's how the original dna molecule one copy of original dna molecule gave rise to two copy from one copy you can see two copies of dna okay then the distance between these two consecutive base pair we have already told all these things the distance between two base pair it's around 0.34 nanometer and the length if the length of a dna double helix in a typical mammalian cell it is calculated by how it is calculated by multiplying the total number of base pair with the distance between two consecutive base pair that, that means total number of base pair here you can see total number of base pair it is multiplied with the distance between two consecutive base pair this kind of problems you will get so how you can calculate length of double helix in a typical mammalian cell they will give the total number of base pairs then you have to multiply that with 0.34 what is 0.34 that is the distance between two consecutive base pairs okay so the total number of base pairs should be multiplied with 0.34 which is the distance between two consecutive base pairs okay so that is almost around 2.2 meters in the case of mammalian cell and that is greater than the dimension of a typical nucleus okay so how you will calculate by multiplying total number of base pairs with the distance between two consecutive base pair what is the distance between two consecutive base pair it's 0.34 the packaging of dna helix this topic is somewhat lengthy thank you in prokaryotes prokaryotes like e coli they don't have a particular nucleus or defined nucleus and eh? the dna dna is not scattered throughout the cell okay and the dna dna is negatively charged dna is negatively charged so it's how it will be it will be held with some protein protein which is having positive charge that uh, so the dna will be held with or it is held with some protein which is positively charged in a particular region that is called as nucleoid that particular region is called as nucleoid okay and the dna in the nucleoid it is organized in large loops held by proteins the dna in nucleoid is organized in large loops held by proteins okay so in prokaryotes e coli they don't have a definite nucleus so the dna is not but the dna is not scattered throughout the cell and dna is negatively charged so it is so the dna is having negative charge so how it will be held with some positively charged protein in a region 
which region the region is called as nucleoid and the dna nucleoid it is organized in large loops held by protein okay dna in the nucleoid is organized in large loops which is held by protein okay So that's all about today's class. You have any doubt? Is it clear, Deepa? You have any doubt? No, ma'am. Okay, just go through these portions because next class onwards. All these points will come. Just we will use the technical terms to explain the further sections. Just go through. If you have any doubt, you can ask me in the next class. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.